All right, hello and welcome back to Honey on the Road for the Turbo Graphics 16. Uh, it's a platforming-ish game where you run along roads. Well, it, it's a game that's actually easier to to show off than to explain. And that's okay. So we can choose between honey, honey and lemon, and continue. Uh, let's stick with honey only. So uh, this is what I meant by you can control bro. You we are running along roads. So there are four roads corresponding to different vertical planes. Uh, well, I guess to us they're vertical planes. Uh, it looks like we want to run right, which hopefully we do automatically. Uh, you can jump with A, uh, B button. What the heck? What does B button do? Okay, B button lets you do a backwards somersault, which, I mean, I, I guess that's useful. And uh, C button, I know it does something, but it's probably not doing anything right now. Uh, let's see, are there any sort of weapons? And, uh, well, <laughs> it's kind of funny because when we're destroyed, it's like we are, that's a lot of lives we get actually. We just kind of instantly crumble like the small little lifeless stone statue that we are. Uh, somewhat interestingly, I believe those are supposed to be clay dolls that we're running into- Oh, that was a life down there in the bottom row. Uh, these, those are also clay dolls we're supposed to be avoiding. So it's like, okay, you've got one piece of stone pottery trying to destroy another piece of stone pottery. It's the pottery wars. Uh, the sign says two kilometer- Hmm. You know, I would have thought, uh, our ordeal would have ended at zero kilometers, but fair enough. Um, hey, what gives? So this one, I have to manually hold right. Maybe there's a toggle. Okay, so I have to manually hold right. You know, I was enjoying the game with that just kind of simplified everything for me. Oh, that was that was pretty quick. Like, okay, so I died, right? immediately the game is like game over and it's you know I, I thought I made some forward progress here so okay this one is automatic so I guess they wanted you to like I don't know get comfortable in this game right now just kind of get used to moving along but they didn't want you to get too comfortable in later on stages because again the game has to be hard right uh, also hmm doesn't seem to be any sort of way to make things move faster. So, well, I mean, so basically, you're playing what amounts to uh, a ton of auto scrollers. It's just one after another, auto scrollers all day. So, if you're planning on doing a speedrun, do not choose this game. This game seems like it would be a terrible choice for a speedrun. Now, one thing that is kind of interesting is they do seem to have implemented parallax scrolling. Now, I'm not entirely sure how the TurboGrafx-16 uh, handles parallax scrolling. I know it can't do Mode 7. <laughs> Marketing buzzwords. But um, it seems to be doing parallax scrolling just fine. And then the paths are moving at different speeds that uh, the developer could probably hard-coded and is not automatically in there. Okay, now... We're entering in level two, but we only have one life left, so I am not optimistic about our chances, but... But you see, in level two, we can move, like, really quickly. So I'm wondering if there's something going on here where, like... Okay, so I think that is a two-player... Really? Okay, you don't actually lose a life if you run into the other guy. But I mean... Well, what was the point? He's just gonna die sooner or later. And you know, so am I. Just in case you're wondering, it is in fact worthwhile to wait for that initial screen to depixelize because I have never seen so many of these little creatures anywhere before in my life. On the bright side though, 
because there were like I've been breaking a lot of these guys so it's good to see that there is an entire town of them left over so you know I guess in a sense I don't have to feel bad about breaking them at all right because of course it's okay to break inanimate objects but breaking animate objects that's that's a no-go I also like if you look at the statue in the lower right hand corner his face kind of alternates between like a contented satisfaction and very much displeased. Well, let's get to work. So yeah, you have to really kind of... Well, I was going to say you have to perfect your stutter step, but somehow I lost all credibility when I killed myself instantly as I came back. But you, you kind of have to perfect this sort of stutter step, because you have to be able to go to full speed at any time, but if you go full speed, then you're just going to go all the way to the right of the screen. So it's not really going to work. Oh. Or you could just walk at the top of the screen. Well, but then you like to get ganged up on. Or then you'll be ganged up on by so many of those guys. At least on the bottom screen, like, it's more... So I basically have not improved at all. Like, at all, even. But anyway, it's a little less perilous to hang out on the bottom of the screen. Well, you're trading one sort of danger for another sort of danger. Yeah, that about ended the way I expected it to. Well, I managed to make it to the next level with two lives. So at least you can improve in this game. This is especially perilous because as you move along, you're basically always going to be in the middle of the screen. But I really wish the screen kind of scrolled from the side, like that he was more to the left side of the screen, because you do not get to see a lot of what's coming up at you. On the bright side, though, you can move to the left kind of somewhat freely, so... And you at least control the pace of play. So this level 2 is a lot easier than level 1, both in a gameplay sense and both in a psychological wearing on your soul sense. Uh, this appears to star a pink fluffy bunny, so I'm hoping it'll be easy. And instantly, my hopes have been dashed. Why did I think that it would be a pink fluffy bunny? Of course, it is a gin on a cloud. Oh, somehow I've lost three lives, but I have three lives left. So I think as you collect items, then you do in fact get lives back. So, well, maybe I shouldn't avoid all those items. So with Zimir, do I notice there's some degree of lag as four or more sprites just kind of enter the screen? Kind of like that. It gives you that extra millisecond of lag that helps you react. Okay, since I know the pink things are trouble, let's go for the red things. Plus, then we get to fight a cuddly cat afterwards. I'm sure that sign is overblown. Well, I still think it's better than the pink things, but not by much. Oh my gosh, because the, the blocks, the rocks actually kind of block your way, so you have to kind of think ahead if you want to make it past these objects. And collecting all the items... Oh, okay. So if you die, you're not necessarily out of luck. You just have to deal with this. Oh my gosh. You, you know, I almost would have preferred the death at this point. What do you know? Got my wish. So I have come up with one slightly pro strategy to handle this one. I don't know if you noticed, but the guy walked into a pit and then disappeared. So pretty much you kind of walk along, you switch lanes, and then you wait till one of them gives you a pit, then you pretty much just hang around behind there. I don't know, I've noticed that changing lanes is a lot more safe and consistent than jumping over enemies. Although I'm sure the game knows that too and will eventually force me to jump over things. 
It's actually the most lives I've ever had at the end of the stage. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by his toe. Well, fire rocks are annoying. Let's remember what this was like. Oh, I did! Almost. I almost did it. On the bright side, now I know that um, these blue potions will actually restore your life. So now I have an incentive to collect them all. Wait, that sign is very clearly indicating that we should be walking the other way. So I missed it, but I think it's 30 blue potions and then you get an extra life. I was so close to making it further than I have before. And now I have three of those blue guys chasing after me. You want to make it four? Okay, one of them went away. Oh, no deaths, surprisingly. Oh, well, I almost got away with getting that one up. The Magatama though. Hey, hey, that was not really worth it, but it was still fun to say, hey, hey, somebody's making it to the next level. Now there was a cute and cuddly cat, right? Please be cute. Please be cuddly. Please let me get to the checkpoint. So it was nice knowing you guys, but I don't think I'm making it to the next checkpoint. Oh my god, this is like Frogger of my nightmares. Am I even going in a direction? Or do I just have to survive a certain amount of time? This is incredibly frightening. I basically feel like a mouse right now with all these cats going along. Well, the signs? even though they're going the wrong way, are ticking down in the right direction. So... Oh my god, one life left. The key is not to jump like a scared little mouse. Now they're forcing me to go in the bottom row. Oh my gosh. Please let that be a checkpoint. Please let that be a checkpoint. Please let that be a checkpoint. Ah... Uh... What's going to happen here? Although I will say that that cat level actually was surprisingly easy. I mean, it's not so much- you don't even have to do like any platforming really, it's more about not doing platforming. Which, hey, there's one thing I've learned in this game, it's to not do platforming and to take things as slowly as possible because otherwise everything in the world and then some will be trying to kill me. And immediately we jump into the next thing. It's not as hard as the volcano level. Oh, now if that isn't just temptation, I don't know what it is. Ay, ay, ay. It's not as bad as the uh, lava level. Oh, and bottom row doesn't scroll you back anymore, which downright essential. I also like how they didn't add any enemies. They're like, come on, we know it's hard enough without any enemies. Well, I didn't die. Oh my gosh. Because the thing is, you have to like do two at once in order to keep going. Well, time, time to know. Oh, thank God. There's a continue function. I was beginning to think that the continue menu option was some sort of sick joke or something. I mean... Having to go through the cutscene every time is a small price to pay for knowing that at least I don't have to go through that stupid auto-scroller anymore. Yes, obviously not the way you are supposed to do things, but if it gets it done, it gets it done. Pretty much the only thing I can see right now is that tiny sliver that shows up on the right half of the screen or the rightmost part of the screen, and basically nothing else registers in my field of vision. Yep. 
Yeah, you thought you would be home free once you saw that two sign, but nope. Now you have this. Now, unfortunately, I don't think they've given my character any sort of attacks. So... That makes this awkward. Um... I bet there's an attack somewhere that I haven't used yet? I'm pretty sure I mapped every button, though. Well, he seems to be speeding up, so this could be a time-based boss battle? On the flip side, I just realized the pro strategy that he never goes in the lane he was already in. So if you want to be safe, you just go to the lane he was in. Never mind. He sometimes stays in the same lane he was already in. I'm actually a little bit proud that I pulled that one off. Come on, countdown! Please let this be a countdown to victory! Okay, well, I really thought you just had to last long enough against that guy, but no. There is some other special secret maneuver that I haven't learned yet that you're going to have to do against them. Uh, tune in next time for do I kill him or do I quit? Uh, my money is on quit. Oh, interesting. So when I died and went to the Lava Realm, I got like three lives le back. Just what I wanted, more lives to waste in the Lava Realm. Okay, I give up. I don't know how to defeat the boss, I don't know how to get longer, or get further in the game. I don't know how to summon the willpower to want to get further on the game. Well, that was Honey on the Road. An interesting take on the platforming genre for the TurboGrafx-16. Well, it was a little bit brutal. Like, that... that was brutal. Especially that auto-scroller in the beginning, like, it completely throws off your sense of rhythm and, like... And so every time you die in the beginning, you have to go through that again. And then also, too, the branches, the branches split into paths. And it's like, yeah, okay, you can go on the one way, but it's like it's a trap. You can go the other way, but it's really hard. And so you're stuck between a fiery rock and a pink demon you cannot jump over. It's, it's not a good choice. This, this is a tough game. I'd be surprised if anybody's beaten this. Actually, no, I wouldn't. I mean, it's, it's the... You, the modern day you search on youtube for any game and you could see some guy beating the game blindfolded no less good gosh still i'm kind of glad i played it like the graphics are nice and colorful and if i was a small child this would have amused me endlessly for hours until i inevitably just tossed it down and sighed in frustration but until then it would be a pretty cool game and i mean well, I was going to say at least the game is not confusing, but there were a few parts of that game where I was a little bit confused. Still though, honey on the road. I never expected to be walking along the road and find a, hun a hidden honey pot like this, but I'm glad I did. Thanks, face designed by Ark. I'm not sure which is the sillier name. So on that note, this cat's got a scat. So this is a brief bout of foreshadowing. Alright, let's see what the uh, duck level is. Maybe it's a kappa. Okay, so... <laughs> it's scrolling along. Everything's moving up and down. Making me a little sick. But otherwise, it's, it's doable. 
Although honestly, I think the uh, cat level is probably... Oh. I honestly, I think the cat level though is easier. Eight kilometers of this nonsense? Yeah, I'd rather just take the lava. On the bright side, the jump kick also trivializes the first level. First two levels, actually. In my defense, there is no way I would think to use the jump kick on enemies because your guy shatters with so much as one light touch by the enemies. Why would it be okay to backflip into them? So, the timing on the backflips is actually fairly generous, but that time I actually managed to die. So, that's like the only time I've ever missed one of those backflips, so... Yeah, no backflips are definitely the way to go. Uh, you cannot backflip against these rocks, though. So, this level is just as hard as it was for me before I knew how to backflip. Which, frankly, is not that hard, so long as you take it sufficiently slowly, and you are sufficiently cautious. But I bet for a casual player, this level would be super hard because they'd be like, what? I can't just backflip over everything. It's like, hey, welcome to my world, pal. That was a lot of cats at once. Well, would you look who it is? Hey, guess what? I got a surprise for ya. Easy as a backflip. Okay, do I feel like going to the doctor or do I feel like going to Birdo? Heck yes, I'll choose Yellow Birdo. Well, this level is promising. Oh, I didn't actually die. Ho 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 ho. You have become your own. You have become your own undoing! Okay, so if you do actually have the misfortune of actually walking into them, you will die. But you can also backflip against their projectiles. Honestly, I feel like that's kind of one of the more fair enemies. It's like, okay, I can see this. It's like, if I backflip you, then you're gonna die. But if you shoot me, then I'll die. And it's like, you know, that's kind of fair. And you know what? If there's a level in this game that I can describe as almost kind of fair, then you know, maybe now it's really time to scat. So on that note, this cat's gotta scat.